Welcome back. It is 1480, if you could believe it. Oh my gosh, we are getting so close to the next phase of this challenge. It is wild. Um, in the last one, we had the triplets age up into children, and we also had Lavinia uh, start courting with Iggy. She is out in society. She got in a little spat with Olivia, but we are all good there. She's currently courting Iggy. And in this one, oops, just listen everybody who needs to get married because apparently I have to do a lot of stuff. Um, yeah, so the boys are aging up this year, which I'm really nervous about, to be honest. So let's, let's just do it. Teens can't get a seven. We have Malcolm, Thomas, and Mortimer. Okay, what did I say they couldn't get? I already forgot, a seven. Malcolm. Ooh, that was close. Thomas. Mortimer. Oof, it was also close. Okay, and then as for babies, Malcolm will marry and have four children. So let's just put him here. My list of people is getting very long. Malcolm, third, land grab, um, four. Oh, I was like halfway through adding in. Claudine and Isabel. I think that's their last name, unless I have totally forgotten. But anyway, oh, why am I going here? Anyway, uh, and then Mortimer, because obviously Thomas is going to have children. Mortimer's going to have five. Oh my gosh, this is great. Mortim Mortimer Larkin will have five. And then I guess our Thomas Larkin has an infinity of children that he could have so okay now um let me introduce you to the new family and then we'll do two more things so here is our new family by mad mermaid 713 this is the is it the bergeron family like the sports player um so the Bergeron twins have always stuck together. Orla is only interested in messing around with whoever and drinking. Thora is searching for true love. Orla is very vain and bases her men solely on attractiveness and wealth. So this is going to be very exciting. This is Orla. She's romantic, materialistic, and hates children and has the serial romantic aspiration. And then we have Thora who uh, has the soulmate aspiration. She's loyal and romantic. And I love that the timing of this because... The boys are aging up into teens, so they are going to start looking at the ladies. So I'm excited about that. Also, I gave makeovers to, um, I aged up a couple of the children and gave them makeovers, as you saw just now in um, in the spreadsheet. So I just wanted to show you them because I spent way too much time on these makeovers. It's like embarrassing. But anyway, that's just her winter outfit. So don't worry about that. Um, this is Claudine. I aged her up. She is gorgeous. I love her. And then we also have Isabel, who again, also very beautiful. I mean, look at them. They're gorgeous. So I am really excited about introducing them to the boys. And then also I aged up Diana, um, so I gave her a quick makeover. To, I say quick. It was not quick. It was very not quick. I spent like at least an hour and a half yesterday playing um, The Sims and – is that her in here? Um, playing The Sims and just like giving Sims makeover, adding Sims to the game. This is Diana. So here she is. She is also so beautiful. Oh my gosh. Okay, so here's her everyday wear. And then here is her um, formal wear, party wear. So look at her. I love this hairstyle on her. It looks so good with like the little, yes. Okay, she's gorgeous. They're all gorgeous. Any one of them could become Thomas's wife, Mortimer's wife. It's going to be great. So that's that. And then also... Um, I was thinking that we should, because I was looking at our married section. So I wanted to kind of keep people marrying in their town. So for like Henford on Bagley, the roomies are still there. I still haven't married some of them. Summer doesn't really have anyone to marry. I was thinking we could marry Liberty to, um, to Randolph, 
But like Summer has that scandal. So, you know, obviously a land grab isn't going to pick her. So I was thinking about what to do with Summer. So I was like, you know what? Since Gavin and Zoe have been unable to have children, maybe he divorces Zoe and then marries Summer. So let's see there. No, that's Dawn. Also, Katrina's getting old, you guys. Katrina is getting old. Okay, so instead of having her be his wife, he divorces her. I can't do that, apparently. Come on. Aw. Okay, hold on. We'll have to go to their house. Um, ugh, that's so annoying. Okay, um, so I'm thinking that that'll happen, and then let's roll for how many children they'll have. Will they have children? Oh my gosh, they'll have ten kids? No wonder. I mean, unfortunately, Zoe couldn't give him any children. So, that is really something. Ten kids. Oh, my gosh. Whew. I mean, ten kids is not going to fit in that house. Maybe, um, hold on. Let me just go here. There's also another thing I wanted to tell you about. Ugh, I can't believe we're having to make this detour. Um, okay, so Summer is getting removed from the list. Yeah, so Randolph is not a an adult yet, so I'm holding off on his marriage to Liberty for right now. And then, you'll see in a second, I did add, you know, sort of add Madalena back into the game. You'll see in a second, but first we have to do this. So, yes, Gavin divorces Zoe and marries Summer. Also, I was thinking about marrying Malcolm and Madalena, but he's not an adult yet, a young adult yet. So I'm just going to wait until he is, but we can have them courting until then. Because technically, she's not like a Windenburg girl. Technically, she's a, um, a Penford on Bagley girl. So, divorce. And I'll just click on Summer. I wonder if now that they're divorced, if I can do it and create a sim. We're going to find out. That would be the easiest. Uh, anyway, so um, I'll probably cut part of this out so that we can skip to the next thing I want to talk about without having to wait through all these loading screens, unless this works. Which it does. Okay, well, never mind then. But we still do have two more loading screens we have to wait through. So there is that. But yeah, so if you remember, Summer um, had a little fling with Dante. He, she, okay, so when Francesca had had her, was it Francesca? Tiffany? Maybe it was Tiffany. When Tiffany had her little scandal and... Summer had, like, distanced herself from Tiffany and was not being a good friend anymore. So Dante kind of, you know, seduced her and then um, cheated on her with Nina, of course, and then, you know, kind of ruined her reputation a bit. So uh, there was that. All right. So they are currently pregnant. All righty. So um, there was all that. And it was pretty awkward for Summer, who had previously had great prospects. So that was a bummer for her. But now she is going to be the second wife and apparently have ten babies with Gavin. So, you know, sometimes things just work out, I guess. Anyway, let's head back here. So now I want to talk about Ginevra. So Ginevra, as we know, went missing. And you can see, here she is now. So I used Dante to replicate her, so she might look a tiny bit different. But um, here she is again. But since she went missing, and I loved the um, 
the things you guys talked about with, you know, maybe it had to do with the fairies. So what I'm going to say is this Madalena isn't really Madalena. It's a changeling. So she's got some very odd combination of traits. She is a fairy, but nobody knows that. They think Madalena has just returned and uh, they don't know that she's been replaced by a fairy. So that is what is exciting there. I'm going to try and keep her in her disguise. Sometimes she changes out of it. You can even see that she's not in it in um, the like picture here. But yes, so I'm really excited about that turn of events, having a changeling in our household. So that'll be fun. And we will continue today with uh, Lavinia stuff. The boys don't age up until like the last day of the year, so we won't get too into their stuff just yet. But we also have Madalena, who may or may not have people find out. We have to, you know, see if her disguise falls off or what happens, but we'll see if she can you know, pretend to be human among them. Uh, the fairies have taken Madalena and replaced her with one of their own. So this is really exciting. And let's hop into the game. Alrighty, so here we are. And we are going to start off by throwing a ball because I want to introduce um, Lavinia to some of the other ladies. I want to see who she's going to be friends with and who, you know, who she might not be friends with and all of that stuff. So I think that that'll be fun. So we're going to start there and head over to the ballroom and get everyone over here. Of course, she's obviously going to be trying to dance with Iggy and stuff as well. That will be, um, you know, her number one, obviously trying to get the guy so we are headed over there now and it's taking a really long time <laughs> anyway so here we are so let's bring everyone in also I just like thought I should save I don't know it just like popped into my head like you should save the game um it did crash once already today so I was like mm, I better you know after doing all those makeovers <laughs> so here we are. Everyone is in here. I put some food there. The mixologist never showed up. Rude. But anyway, so everyone is going to get something to eat. And uh, we are going to just include um, Madalena in uh, in this, the new Madalena. Um, she is definitely going to be uh, trying to get together with Malcolm Payne. Not, yeah, Malcolm Payne here. I have two Malcolms in the game right now. It's kind of confusing. Um so yeah, and then Lavinia is going to be dancing with Iggy, talking with him and all that stuff. They are officially courting, so that's really nice. Um, and then Madalena, of course, is trying to talk to Malcolm here. We'll just say that he's visiting um, the area. So technically, he's related to us. He is our cousin's child. So first cousin once removed, I believe. So um the game doesn't really include that, though, as something that, um, you know, is a relative. Also, that's not even Madalena, so <laughs> it's fine. Um, also, as you can see in Lady Whistledown, Dante, everyone knows that Dante fathered an illegitimate child. Everybody knows. Oh, my gosh. So it is, like, not a surprise at all um, to that. Um Obviously, everybody knows, but it's being actually reported on now, so there is that. And then, um, also, you know, they're talking about how he's been caught, and, you know, it's always Dante who's in the paper. <laughs> so, anyway, we are having Lavinia just chat with Iggy, trying to get that gold on the ball, and we definitely have. The ball is over now, but we're keeping everyone here. We're pretending that it's still going, because the, the events are too short in this game. So, um... It is also New Year's Eve, so we are just having them all uh, doing their resolutions and stuff. So first, we're going to have her talk. So it looks like Olivia didn't show up today to be annoying to us, so fine. Olivia's not here. And um, so we're going to talk to Thora and um, Orla. So those two we're going to talk to and it looks like Lavinia has good first impressions of both of them which is really interesting because I thought her and Orla would not get along but I guess they do um but obviously also uh Orla is older so I am going to have Lavinia chatting with Thora because um you know I feel like they would get along they're both like you know well Thora is romantic 
Lavinia is not so romantic, but she is, you know, trying to find a husband right now. And Thora seems like a nice girl. So they are chatting. It actually looks like um, Diana does not have a good first impression of Lavinia. So that's really interesting. A lot of people think Lavinia is like stuck up and stuff, which is really, um, it's possible, I guess. <laughs> I mean, she is very wealthy and kind of does what she wants. So I guess there is that, so uh, it looks like her and Diana might not be destined to be great friends, but they are. They also are already really friendly, like they have a pretty good friendship, so I feel like Diana could be a good friend to her, even though maybe they don't have the best first impression of each other, um, and then I'm trying to, like no one, none of the people I wanted to interact with showed up to this party, like the girls aren't there, like Amelia's not there, and then... Um, Claudine and Isabel aren't there like nobody's there so I am trying to invite them all and again it looks like the first impressions aren't quite adding up not with Amelia so I mean obviously that doesn't mean that Lavinia can't be friends with these people I think it just means that like maybe they won't be best friends like maybe they'll be friends but they won't be so close because of that so I'm just inviting them all over one by one to get their impressions. And again, still, like, all of them. It seems like the only one she had, like, a really good back and forth with was Thora. So that is really interesting to me that, like, none of the ladies have um, this good first impression with Lavinia back and forth. Like, it's always one-sided. And I wonder, I bet, so last episode, I forgot to say, because I didn't remember that... I didn't remember. Anyway, so I forgot to say that it looks like, like a cup last year there was in Whistledown saying that Lavinia had a little scandal, and so I think that's probably because we kissed Iggy. Although I don't know how anyone would have known that because we were alone in a room. But anyway, uh, maybe maybe Iggy said something. I don't know. So um, so. Basically, there was a little something something. So I wonder if that's why the other ladies are kind of like, mm, because probably it's Olivia spreading rumors about Lavinia all over town because she obviously wants Iggy too. So that is something that um, is interesting. I think that maybe Olivia might be poisoning some of the ladies against her. Also, though, we are working continuing to work through the truly accomplished aspiration. Um, she is about to get high up in her etiquette skill. Really excited about that. So there is that. And uh, we're going to send some letters. So we're sending a friendly letter to Iggy, a friendly letter to Thora, and then a mean letter to, <laughs> to Olivia. Um, so I think that that would be funny that, uh, you know, they obviously aren't getting along, her and Olivia. Although... Olivia later does call and say, like, well, we'll talk about that later. But anyway, so we are just working through this. We're kind of grinding through that. And we're also grinding on the parent aspiration um, for Thomas. He is working on the super parent aspiration, and he wants to achieve level 10 of the parenting skill, get into super parent mode, and then, um, you know, have a child age up with three traits. So Lavinia does have the three traits. We just have to wait for her to age up, but he has to get to level 10 parenting. And also he has to, um, go into super parent mode. So we have to do those two things. And we are just having, uh, her, all the money's rolling in. <laughs> we have so much money. Like it's too much. I think, I think it's too much. I, you know, there is such a thing as being too rich. Okay, well, Iggy is just, like, walking away. But, um, so in the meantime, we'll have Malcolm come over. And Malcolm will meet with Madalena. Uh, her family so far does not really suspect anything. I think Thomas is just so focused on, um, you know, focused on the children and all of that stuff so anyway but uh, Malcolm comes in here and he immediately recognizes that um 
he immediately recognizes that Madalena is a changeling. Like he knows immediately. And I, it's just like wild. So I think it's so funny that, that that happened is that he knew right away. And like her family hasn't even said anything. Um, it's just like wild to me that he recognized right away. But also I was checking on some of his, um, traits and I feel like maybe he'd be down for it like I think that he's very inquisitive and very okay Iggy you have to come back um he's very inquisitive and everything so I think that maybe he'd be interested in her still anyway so Iggy and Lavinia are having a chaperoned date um and I'm trying to keep it good I'm doing all the positive interactions but thing they keep getting negative with each other and I think it's probably part of their bad compatibility also they have a little bit of grudges against each other over prom which is stupid but anyway so Thomas is chaperoning and the conversation is just going sideways like they are arguing I'm not controlling them anymore I'm just letting them do whatever they want and they're both arguing with each other and it's not really going well and all of that stuff so um Thomas is going to basically scold Iggy for being rude and improper around his daughter. Um, it's it's a bit of an awkward situation. Lavinia is glad that her dad kind of stepped in and said the state is over, like things are not going well. And he's just kind of talking to her about like, are you sure you want to court him? It doesn't really seem like it's going well. And I think she's really devastated because they were such good friends. They were so, so good friends. And... Even so, like, they were so good, and so she thought that that meant that they would be good romantically, but maybe it's just, like, one of those things where they're better off as friends, you know? Like, I think that it's just not going well. So, Lavinia is kind of sad that her and Iggy can't seem to get along in the romantic sense, so there is that, and... Um, so the date ended kind of poorly, but we are going back here to, um, Thomas and the parenting stuff. Again, we're grinding on that. So we're working there. I know the grind can be annoying sometimes, but you know, that's how we get aspirations done. And that's how we make our way through the night when I'm cheating their needs. <laughs> so anyway, we are almost at level 10. You got this. We're here. We're doing it. There you go. Okay. So, uh, he's now at level 10 parenting and actually off screen just in the night, uh, tonight or like in the last night of the, the, um, year, I was just like, Oh, I'll just have him do some parent interactions. I didn't really know how to get into full parent mo mode. So, I just was like trying to figure it out. I was like Googling it, etc. And it did end up working. So we checked that off. Um, you didn't see it, but we did check it off. So we just have to wait for Lavinian to age up and he completes that aspiration. I don't think he's going to be able to complete the successful lineage aspiration because um, I don't think he's going to live long enough to see a kid reach the top of the career. So there is that. But anyway, so we are going to just... Um, check the mail here we're here with Dante now and he is going to break up another marriage today <laughs> that is something that I am looking forward to so we are going to come over here and have him go and visit um, Bidon who is in the Demarle household so she is there um, as we know she already has two affair babies with her other guy potential butler um, person. So, um, there is that. So we are going to start talking to her and, um, we are going to see where things go. Uh, obviously I did not choose this house for them. So we're just going to pretend that it is a medieval house. So we are going to just have them chatting. They're not really friends yet. So I wanted to get that up before, um, we started working on the romance. Not that I think that she minds. Oh, also, um, we have Lady Whistle down again talking about the ball that we had and um, the hors d'oeuvres for some reason. <laughs> uh, also still talking a lot about Dante. Dante is very popular uh, in Lady Whistle down because he is always making a scandal. <laughs> but yes, so she just, I honestly don't think she cares if she's flirting in front of the kids. Like her husband knows that that kid is not his. He knows. So um, he knows what kind of woman he is with. And so Dante is just chatting with her. There's Claudine there, like, 
trying to ignore what's going on by taking care of her younger siblings. I'm sure that the girls have to like really focus on um, the kids because it doesn't look like mom is too interested in anything but, uh, you know, woohooing. <laughs> so there is that. And she finds him attractive. So we're going to take advantage of that because then all of our uh, things will start passing. All of our... Um, interactions will start going well and um although she did kind of seem to brush us off and she went inside so I think that maybe that is because um she didn't want to maybe she didn't want to chat in front of the children but anyway so they're going to try for a baby <laughs> oh my gosh I'm so terrible uh they are going to try for a baby and they are going to um, focus on that. Just have a little woohoo sesh. Then we're probably going to send Dante home. It doesn't all have to happen in one moment. So um, there is that. So we are just focusing on sending him home, which is taking forever for some reason. So I'm just going to switch over to one of the kids and then we'll head back to the house. I do want to, I'm trying to break up one marriage per year. And since we are going into, um, the birthday party tomorrow. I do want to try and get this done. So I am going to break up her marriage. <laughs> I'm terrible. <laughs> um, okay, so we are going to call her over again and continue on with that. She is definitely pregnant. Look at that nausea. Oh my gosh. She is going to have another blonde baby, baby. <laughs> we don't know. I mean, one of her other kids did end up looking more like her, so they could pass. But she could potentially be having a Larkin baby. Poor, I mean, Dante, come on. <laughs> he can't help himself, really. Um, so there is that. And then we are going to just have them stargaze, just doing their thing. And um, we are going to just keep working on that, trying to get them romantic. It seems to be working, but obviously we have to get it really high up to ask her to leave her husband. So uh, they're doing their thing. She's enjoying it. She loves the blonde men, apparently. So we are having fun there, and we are just going to keep going. They are, okay, she left. Bye forever. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, so... The kids, on the other hand, are having difficult dynamics with each other. I think that probably, you know, just being left on their own and everything has been really difficult for them. And they are definitely getting on each other's nerves about that. That is definitely uh, not good. And I'm going to stop saying the word definitely. Look how nauseous she is. So she is definitely having his baby. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Another baby for Dante. He has baby rolls that we've been using. I've been trying to think of like what would stop him from having kids after his baby rolls are um, done. But anyway, so we are going to then head out again after um, breaking up her marriage. We did ask her to divorce her husband. She did agree. So there is that. And she is... <laughs> Now, no longer married uh, to Cassin, so maybe she'll remarry to that other guy. Who knows? But she's not going to marry Dante. That's not going to happen. So um, that's where we're at, and we are going to just head back because we need to have the twins' birthday party. So we're back here with everyone. I think it is so funny how they don't know that Madalena is in Annie, well, a fairy, and... Um, Yet, Malcolm figured it out in two seconds. <laughs> so, if she's, like, glowing, she glows. <laughs> you have to figure it out. Or maybe he does know, but he's just, like, choosing not to worry about it. Like, just choosing to ignore it because what's he going to do? Like, have another fight with the fairies? He heard about, um, he was there for Cassandra's fight with the fairies and, um, again, and then Bella and everything, he was there for that. So I think he doesn't really want to get mixed up in this stuff. So he's like, you know what? My sister is probably dead. Like she's gone. And, um, you know, she's been replaced and I am not getting into it. <laughs> so maybe he will, maybe he won't. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. Should we go and try and do something about finding Madalena? Honestly, I don't have her. So part of me is thinking that we should just accept that she's gone 
um, and have our changeling take her place completely. Or maybe he doesn't know. I don't know. But I, I think that probably he has some kind of inkling that something's not quite right but also come to mind is that she was missing for a few years she was missing for a few years and maybe she's changed in that time maybe he thinks that she just is different um, and that she is no longer um, you know like herself and she is focused more on um, other things like she came back and she w she was a little different and that makes sense because she's been through a lot. So I think that that might be the case there. So we'll have to see how that goes. But otherwise, we are going to have a fire. Okay. Anyway, it's the, the kid's birthday and they are going to try and bake a cake. Thomas is so unbothered. He was just like, yeah, I'm standing here and there's a fire and I don't care. So, oh my gosh. Okay, so yes, there's a fire. The We're going to ignore that. But so the kids are going to age up. And also, so I think that Lavinia kind of has thought about what her father has said. And she had a conversation with Iggy briefly there. And she was like, look, or she's about to be like, look, Iggy, I think maybe we're better off as friends. I think that maybe that it wasn't meant to be. And we should go back to how we were before we added all this complication. So she is going to ask to end courtship of Iggy. And that's going to be the end of that. We'll see what happens with Iggy in the future. But she just, it just wasn't working. Anyway, so we're aging up the kids. Thomas just aged up and he has the squeamish trait. And we chose Renaissance Sim because he is a genius and all of that. So we'll see where that goes. And then Mortimer aged up with materialistic, which I love. So we gave him the fabulously wealthy aspiration. So um, I think that it's really interesting too, because if you look at Thomas, the elder, he has good compatibility with Mortimer, but bad compatibility with um, Thomas. So he, maybe he's been too hard on his air. He's been really, you know, difficult and, um, you know, trying to push Thomas to, you know, be all that. And so because of that, he put the strain on their relationship, which he didn't do with Mortimer. So there you go. There you saw that Iggy and um, Lavinia have ended their courtship. And because of that, um, it did knock down their friendship quite a bit. And it obviously we got rid of their romance bar. I don't know why I can't click replace on these. That's so weird. But anyway, let's clean up the floor, replace that. We'll get some makeovers done and that'll be it for this video. So I do also want to say is since I didn't want you to just have to watch while they were gone, I sent Thomas and Mortimer to be presented so that they can join society. So they have done that. And actually Thomas did not do well at his presentation. He did not do that well. And so it was kind of awkward and uncomfortable. And um, Mortimer became a diamond. So it's really interesting, the juxtaposition between, you know, failing and succeeding so much. Like, it, not, neither of them were, like, middle of the road. They were both... Thomas didn't do well, Mortimer did really well. And I think that because Mortimer is materialistic and he's gluttonous, he always wants more. I think that Mortimer is more driven than Thomas. I think Thomas, perhaps he's squeamish. He's a little precious. You know, he doesn't want to um, get his hands dirty. He just wants to probably sit back and live off the family money and all of that stuff. So I think that probably because of that, um, Thomas is not as hardworking as Mortimer. Also, I feel so weird adding facial hair to teenagers, so I'm just not going to. But anyway, so um, I think that, you know, I tried to reflect that too. Thomas is a little more slicked back, put together. Um, and I think that, he, you know, he's a genius. He just wants to do his thing. He just wants to put his head down, do his family work, manage his estate, and that's okay. Meanwhile, Mortimer, as the second son who has a smaller estate and all that stuff, is much more driven to, you know, push forward and get more, add more to his estate, add more to his life. I think that he is definitely going to be trying to improve his station in life much more than Thomas, who might 
settle, or even we'll have to see as they're teenagers because Thomas might become jealous. Mortimer's the diamond. Mortimer's loved more by their father. Mortimer has more drive. Maybe Thomas is going to become jealous of his brother, even though they're best friends. But as we saw with the girls, uh, Tiffany and um, Francesca, that sometimes jealousy can drive people to do really crazy things. So there is that. I think that it might it might hurt their relationship. I think that, that Mortimer is so much more successful and driven. So we'll have to see where that goes. I'm really excited to see where it goes. I am going to add a lot of drama into their lives, of course, because you know how I am. So very exciting and I will catch you in the next one where we will finally be introducing the boys to the ladies. So we'll see you then.